this. Now the pressure on this panel is uh, almost zero. And let's increase a little bit. Okay, now it's 45. As you can see, water is coming out, but it with air bubbles. Also, you have to turn this point slow up, so this LVDT will flow up while water comes out, as you can see here. And also, we can see the water level in, in front of this cylinder is dropping because water is now floating out from here. Now it's floating out. Okay, so we cannot see any air bubbles inside the tubes. So change the side, side turning to down, flow downward. Also, there we cannot see any air bubble. And then we can probably open this top top wells and let some and close this two wells, close this two tube. You can just uh, simply block the tube by your hand like this. And the open top here. Just also water flows out. We cannot see any air bubbles. And then close this well. Also close the fuel rest and the external cylinder. Just shut down like in here. Okay. Now we connect these two tubes to the triaxial chamber. One to the black, and uh, the other one connects to the red. As you can see here. Now, let's connect this big tube to the triaxial chamber. This tube goes from this cylinder and then connect to this side to the cell the to the chamber of the triaxial cell. And it supplies cell pressure, confining pressure to the water. And uh, now it is being connected and I put 2.5 cell pressure to the specimen. So the specimen is now under the 2.5 PSI confining, confinement. And the next stage is to clean the air inside this triaxial chamber. And the first, we have to open this valve here to let the air goes out from this point. Previously, it has a cap here. We have to take this off and uh, fasten this too well. Okay. And uh, cl let's close the wrap and leave the black open. And uh, we open this, open the filling, open the pressure, open both fuel red and the uh, external. And we can increase a little bit of the pressure, turning this well, like turning this tuner here. Can increase, increase. So you can see water comes up. There's no air bubble, right? Yeah, so we can shut down. And then we change to, we close, we, we open this red one. 
can see water goes very slow. But still, like some water comes out. There's no air bubbles. Okay, so let's change to the red one. So close the black one, open this red, red valve. And also, we open here. Look at the air bubbles. Uh, yeah, it's gone. Air bubbles is gone. There's no air bubble. Water continues to flow out. But still, some air bubbles out. Okay, now it's good. No air bubbles. Close. Close. And let's change to this side. There's no air bubbles out. So now we have cleaned the air in this whole system. And uh, we can put the plug in the cold water pressure transducer. We can plug in here. And now close this point. Turn it tightly. Okay, so now we can start back pressure saturation. We just increase increase the cell pressure here. Just increase the cell pressure by turning this valve to five psi. And also we can increase that pressure to two point five psi. And uh, we can turn this as you can see. The screen now is 2.5. So we have to make the pressure difference between the back pressure and the cell pressure. There's always 2.5 psi. The cell pressure is 2.5 psi higher than the back pressure. And now let's open the two wells. Okay, now the back pressure is 2.5 and the cell pressure is 5 psi. So difference is 2.5. So actually, it's like 2.5 effective confining pressure put on this specimen. After we saturated the specimen, we have to run consolidation test. Like we keep the back pressure constant, increase the cell pressure. So like you can turn this valve, like the error showing here, you turn this side, increase the cell pressure, and uh, until you reach the target effective confining pressure. And then start consolidation. And uh, usually while using the pure rod, the inner cylinder, to do the consolidation. As you can see, I keep the external cylinder water level, this pipe here, this pipe here, and uh, the water from the specimen will flow into the inner pipe while we're doing consolidation. Like uh, you can see here, 4.4. Here is the inner pipe reading at this time. And this side is the uh, inner pipe. The reading is 2.24, I believe.
And we can get all the consolidation readings to our computer and plot the consolidation data. As we can see here, it's in the log-log scale. And uh, the vertical line, vertical axis is the reading from the pipe and the um, and also we can actually we get we can also get these readings, the volume change readings from our volume change machine and plot it here. The horizontal axis is is time, it's in seconds and plotted in log scale. As we can see, we have two turning points. One is in the beginning, and the one where it reaches the final, the end of the consolidation, we can see the curve becomes flat. And from this curve, we get T0, and, uh, and we, get, we get T50 and T100. And we put uh, the T50 and T100 in these tables and get the sharing speed of the specimen. And for our specimen now, the sharing speed is 0 0.005. So it's quite slow because it's heavy clay. Now let's go to the Humboldt software to control the triaxial compression test. Double click this. And then let's go to the here, in the upper left, there is a file. You click it and go to new test and then this window will appear this window will appear and uh, click here connect to device to input is load and the second channel will also connect to device to and uh, connect it to the pressure and the third channel will also connect to device to and uh, this channel we collect the displ displacement. And then you hit the login type bus tab. And we also connect to device 3 input displacement. And the distance increment is up. And we are using point two, point zero zero two as the login type distance value. And we we'll go to start condition. We will use first po point taken as trigger value, and then we go to stop condition. It's a displacement control, so we are using point five zero as the final, as the end of the displacement, because it's taking 20% of the shear strain. And the model parameters is going upward, and the number we put here is point zero zero. 0 0.05, uh, 0 0 0.005, as we obtained from the consolidation test result. And once you set up all of this, you put the flex chamber underneath the load frame and make sure lock these two wells because we are running on drain test, it's consolidated on drain test, and make sure to open the pore pressure valve so the pore pressure transducer can read the pore water pressure change during shearing. And once all this is, is set up, you can just click this, button, this gray button here, run the test, and you'll be good. Once 20% shearing strain is reaching the specimen, the system will be automatically stopped and all the testing data will be saved in, will be saved in our computer.
Finally, don't forget to put this testing progress tag on near your specimen.